Hey guys, my name is Nibiri and it's time for another Sin Saturday and today we're gonna finish up the leads that we created last week. So what we're gonna do today is first of all we're gonna route all the layers to a bus. After that we're gonna correct the sub because it was way too loud in the last video. And after that we're gonna create a send for a reverb and our delay to just make sure that our leads will sound huge. And as always, leave a comment down below. Let me know you were here. Let me know what you liked, disliked. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. But without further ado, let's start finishing those leads. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into the mixer and we're gonna pull down the uh, bass. It was just way too loud and we just need to correct this so that the lead is a little bit more in balance. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take all the layers that created our synth, so not the sub, but everything above that. Uh, we're gonna put that to a bus, and I personally like to use uh, 125 for that. Uh, but you can pick any other channel, of course. Um, what we're gonna do right now first is we're gonna EQ this a tiny bit, maybe give it some extra highs with a passive EQ. But uh, a part of that leads are already fat and they're uh, properly EQ'd, so I don't think we'll need to do much to this. A neat thing about the passive EQ is that it just adds some proper brightness to your leads. As you'll see in the uh, Pro Q, you'll really see that it just flattens out the entire high end and it just sounds a lot better instead of, in my opinion, using Fab Filter or some other EQ. I'll just show you. Hopefully what I did with my mouse kind of explained it. Normally it just curves down a little bit, but with that passive EQ, it just stays a little bit more uh, linear. And with adding this passive EQ, I don't really think we need to do much to the leads anymore. So let's just start making our reverb send. So to start making our reverb send, we're gonna first pick our reverb, of course. And I just like to use Valhalla Room, just because it's easy to work with and it just sounds great. If you're still using FL Studio stock reverb, I would suggest you maybe just get a better reverb because getting for Holler Room for myself just changed my sound design and it just made it a lot better. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is the mix. This channel that we're working on is a send channel, so everything that comes through this channel should be wet with the reverb we're creating right now. And then the pre-delay. The pre-delay is just important to create some more space in between the notes of the synth and the time before the reverb comes in. And what I personally really like is to use it, put it around somewhere like 200 milliseconds. If you are um, really want to be technical, if you put your BPM at 155 and you go to one beat, you see it's uh, 380 milliseconds. And what I would like to do is I'd put my reverb or my pre-delay at 190 at this moment. And if you would uh, use 150 BPM, then your uh, first count would be at 400 milliseconds. So then I would put the pre-delay at 200 so that the pre-delay would start at a half beat. This way you just create some space in between your notes of your melody and the time before the reverb comes in. And that generally just makes your reverb sound more huge. So now that we have our mix and our pre-delay set, we're gonna tackle the decay. And for hard style, we just like huge reverb. So I want to crank this two seconds up to something in between six and nine. Just play around a little bit with it, but I personally really like to use like 6.92. Close to seven seconds, but we can do bigger as well. So let's just try something bigger, something like this, for example. Now for the high cut, I like to keep it at 8K. I don't really put it higher because it makes your reverb too bright and too bright reverb can make your lead sound a little bit more thin and it's just gonna mess up your highs. So I would recommend you keep it at 8K or maybe put it a bit lower. And for the depth, we're just gonna throw this open all the way because we need a huge reverb. So we need the most depth we can get out of this um, reverb. And these are basically just the settings that I like to use for my reverb. I just play around a little bit with the pre-delay and the decay and that high cut. Just um, 
dimming that high cut a little bit can make the reverb a lot darker and sometimes your leads stand out a little bit more. Pre-delay is just important with the timing and the decay is just important to create a huge sound. So now that we have our reverb done, we're gonna take a pro cue and put that in front of our reverb. We're gonna give this a low cut and this low cut is just basically gonna clean up our reverb a tiny bit or clean up the signal before it gets through the reverb. And this just makes sure that we don't have too many of these low mids around 200 Hertz. So I would just ramp it up like this and just put it around 200 Hertz and just make sure that it doesn't have too much of these uh, frequencies below the 200 Hertz. This is just to make it a little bit more clean. After this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around with Pro C and this is just to compress our reverb to make sure that it's gonna sound a lot more huge. Um, let me just show you with an example, of course. What I wanna show you with this little example is I'm gonna play a little snippet of the melody and you're gonna hear that it sounds wet from the reverb, but it's not sounding as huge. And that's just basically because our reverb dies out too quickly. Just listen. And it's already way too far in the background, right? And what we want to do with this Pro C is we just put this on here and it's really easy in Pro C. I just throw down the threshold and I raise the output level just a tiny bit. And this will just compress the reverb and just make it sound a lot more um, huge just because it compresses it and it will just sustain a lot longer. Keeps going and going and going until it's finally fading out. But I just like to use this method to just um, give my reverb just a little bit of a bigger feeling. Just put a compressor after your send uh, reverb and it's just gonna work wonders for the size of the reverb. Now just a short tip, if you don't have the uh, Pro C, and I think that's possible, if you just take any compressor and sort of follow these settings, it's just gonna give you the same thing. Um, the reason why the gain is just a lot louder over here is just because in Pro C, we have this auto gain and that just raises it by like five decibels. So if you don't have a Pro C, maybe screenshot this, take some compressor and put them to round about these settings and you're sure to just have a bigger reverb with just an easy compressor. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna click over here and save mixer track state as and we're gonna drag this over to a next channel and this just basically copy pastes it. We're gonna make a sidechain reverb send and the way we're gonna sidechain this is by using Fruity Limiter and on one of our top leads. So let's just take our top lead and sidechain this to this track. And we're gonna open up, where is it? Fruity Limiter. In the Fruity Limiter, you go to the compressor side, pull down the threshold, make sure that it's recognizing our top lead and pull up the knee a little bit. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring the reverb down when the synth is playing and in between the notes when there's nothing playing it's just gonna push it up again and we're just gonna play around with this to make the reverb even bigger You saw me making the release shorter and this basically just is to make uh, the release a little bit faster of course and it's just gonna let that reverb come through a little bit faster and just because this melody doesn't really have that much open spaces in between the notes we just might want to use some of that to just uh, give our reverbs just a little bit more room now with this um, reverb it sounds nice but in my opinion it's not big enough and I just only use this for my side chain reverb and with this side chain reverb I like to just raise the uh, output gain just a little bit more so we're just gonna put this like three decibels higher and with your other compressor just make sure to put it higher as well this is just gonna make the reverb a lot more loud but that gives us some more space to put a good side chain on this and um, yeah let's just tweak this a little bit more and see if we can really make that reverb pop in between the notes
Now do you hear when that reverb just hits in your face when there's no melody playing? That basically was what I was going for. You just wanna raise the volume of your reverb a little bit louder. So you can have more space to sidechain it so that it can be uh, really in your face when there's no notes playing. So now we have our sidechain reverb and our normal reverb. And the trick to create a really huge lead is just by layering those reverbs. So if we just uh, put the other one on again, it's just gonna uh, complement each other. It's just gonna help so much. The normal reverb without the sidechain is just gonna be in the background. It's just gonna make sure that the notes that are playing will sound wet, but not too much. And the sidechain reverb will just be there to really be in your face when there's no melody playing. And they're just gonna help each other to create an even bigger sound. Now I just turned down the uh, send amount just a tiny bit, but that's the only thing that you really need to do. Right now you have two huge reverbs that are complementing each other, and as you're hopefully hearing, this lead is just sounding huge, and that's what we really needed. And for our delay, I like to use Replica, and Replica is just easy to work with, and it's just a good delay. And uh, what I do in here is I'm just gonna put it to straight, gonna put it to ping pong, and we're just gonna put our feedback up a little bit. Whenever you're creating any type of sand channel with some reverb or delay, just put the mix at 100%. Um, yeah, I don't really pay too much attention to this, but you might want to low cut this a little bit, maybe a bit of high cut, some saturation, but that's really all. And maybe turn down a little bit of this uh, feedback so that it doesn't go on too long. And what I like to do is just route my um, top leads to this uh, delay. And I don't like to really route my quartz to the delay. And by just doing this, we're already creating a nice delay, but this is gonna make our lead a little bit muddy like this. It's just all the way through there. And what I wanna do is first of all, just make it a little bit shorter. And a part of that, I wanna put a fruity limiter on here again. And this fruity limiter is just gonna work just like the side chain. It's just gonna make sure that this delay is only coming through when there's no notes playing. So this delay will just be when our melody has faded out, we can just have some echo going. So to just sum everything up, when you've created your leads, just make sure to put every layer apart from the sub into a bus, add some highs because 9 out of 10 times your leads will just need some extra highs. And when you want to create that reverb, just take your reverb, put your mix to 100% because you're working on a sand channel, make sure to set your pre-delay to half a beat and take the decay and just make it something big in between 6 and 9 seconds. After that, you want to add a compressor just to make that reverb just a little bit more huge. And we take this same reverb settings and we put it a little bit louder with our compressor in the second one. Just put three decibels on top of that and start sidechaining it with the top lead to make a sidechain effect happen. And just make those reverbs work together, create an even bigger sound. And after that, you can just add a basic delay, just make it ping pong and just put some sidechain on there so that it doesn't play through your entire melody. Now I hope you like this and you learned something from this and hopefully I'll see you back soon again. Cheers!